Hello Steelers, and welcome to this building and painting video of a 3D printed farm that I got from Paul over at Sabotaged. I asked him if he'd do me a print of a generic Western European farm that I could use for my games set from the early 19th century through to mid 20th century, and this is what he sent. So I'm going to go through all the steps I used to paint and weather this model, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this farm build. The farm came in several pieces. Mostly the buildings themselves and some joining walls. These just needed a quick clean up where the resin had overflowed from the bottom of the model. Then I began laying out the buildings to test where I wanted them placed. I did this on an A4 sheet of plastic card so I could work out how much room I would need and where to trim the sheet. Once I had a good idea of the layout, I began super gluing some of the separate pieces together. I didn't glue everything together at this point as I knew it would be difficult to paint into some of the corners if I had done. So I joined the walls to the buildings and the outhouse to the barn just for now. With the buildings in a more solid state I was able to actually measure the plastic card precisely and cut it down to a size with the sharp knife. I then marked on the card where I wanted the actual farm to be placed with a pen, just as a reminder. The sharp corners were clipped off and then rounded off with a file just to make them look less angular and I put the base to one side just for now. The next stage is to start priming the model. I used a cheap acrylic paint for this and you can get these at cheap art supply shops for next to nothing, and they go quite a long way. I used burnt umber, as it's a nice dark brown that can be painted over without having the starkness of black or white. I use a large brush, and just make sure they get into all the nooks and crannies of the model. You can also thin down the paint a little bit with water, but I don't always find that I need to. And then it was time to start to deal with the brickwork, and there's quite a lot of it on this model. Here, I'm using another cheap acrylic paint from Decor Art called Heritage Brick. This is a nice dark red colour and it works well just for what I want. As with all colours, just use whatever brick red you want here. I just find this is a very good base colour for what's going to come next. And next is dry brushing the brick. For this, I'll use German Camo Orange by Vallejo as it works really well with the brick red previously painted on. You don't have to do this stage as the later wood filler stage will also change the hue of the bricks, but I did it as I wasn't sure how the wood filler would turn out. It does also give you a slight variation on the brick red anyway, so it's probably worth doing. Then I turned my attention to the roofs. In this case, these are tiles, and I use Vallejo's dark sea grey as the base colour. Again, using a big brush and just blocking in the paint on the roofs is a very easy step. The roofs are then dry brushed with Vallejo's neutral grey. This will pick out all the tile edges and give the previous grey a little bit of depth. You can do this as heavy or as light as you want depending on how you want the tiles to look, but I'd certainly recommend starting light and then just building up as you can't go back. I bought a small pot of DIY tester paint called China White for a couple of pounds. These are excellent value and they can go a long way when you're painting scenery. In this case I'm using it to paint the whitewash walls of the farm building itself. Now I painted this quite rough as the first coat, and then went back with the second coat later. But I wasn't too bothered about it being uneven, as this will help our weathering later, and it also it looks quite old and it's been faded, and not painted particularly well anyway by the farm owner. With the majority of the colours now blocked, I sealed the model with spray gloss varnish. This is because gloss varnish is strong, and I'm going to be getting a bit rough with the model soon. I've found that acrylic paints can wipe off resin quite easily, so this is quite an important step. It's also easier to weather models over gloss varnish as the model won't absorb the weathering material. Now you could leave the brickwork here as it is, and it looks fine. However, after seeing Aid Deacon's models on Twitter, I wanted to go a little extra step. And for this, I used cheap wood filler. This is brown colour, but anything like white would also work. You simply trowel the wood filler onto the model, Smooth it in with your fingers so that it gets into all the mortar lines of the brickwork, and then with a damp cloth, wipe off the excess. You can take off as much or as little as you want, and you can see it also affects the colour of the brick as I previously mentioned. The wood filler will take at least 24 hours to dry properly, so I put the farm to one side and left it alone for a while, while I went back to the base. Using some embossed plastic card that railway modellers use, I glued the base to a sheet of it. Make sure that you cover the entire base in glue and then clamp the plastic card in place while it dries. Once it had dried I simply trimmed off the plastic card, cleaned up the edges and using the base as a template. I painted the base in stone grey using a large brush to ensure that I covered everything and got in between all the cobbles. Then I washed the cobble surface with Agrax Earthshade 
and I left it to dry, which didn't take a very long time. Finally, I dry brushed the cobbles with stone grey once again, just to bring out the highlights of the surface, and the base was completed. Then I went back to the buildings. I painted in the doors and window frames, I went with green as a nice contrast to the red of the brick, and I painted the stone window caps and door surrounds. I didn't worry too much about it being neat here, as I went back afterwards and just cut in again with the wall colour where I had got a bit sloppy with my painting. Then it was time to begin some weathering. If you look at tiled roofs, you may notice moss and lichen growing on them, also various stains from bird poo and the like. I wanted to simulate this, and it consists of a three colour palette. Now you can use the ones that I used, or you can formulate your own colours. So I used green okra, I watered it down very heavily, and applied dabs of it along the roof ridge and across the edges of the tiles. And then I watered down some dark military green, and went back and added this to the mix across the areas I'd already done. Then finally with buff, I did the same thing, ensuring that it was heavily watered down. Then I used a large dry and soft brush, and dragged the colours down to the tiles to merge them together and streak them naturally. Pull the brush in one single way here, and I would recommend you doing it only on a small area of the roof at a time just to avoid the paint drying out. Once the roof weathering was finished and dried, I covered the farmhouse and roofs of the brick buildings in flurry wash grime. I didn't do the brickwork as I was happy with how it had turned out, but I did add some just under the eaves of the roofs just to give the model a little bit of interest. The flurry wash is a clay wash and it will settle into the details of the model. It is applied with a big brush, ensuring you cover everything you want to cover with it. Then, when it has dried, use a damp cloth to wipe off the wash, using a downward motion to simulate grime and streaks and other weathering. You can see I unfortunately took off some of the green paint here on the window frames. Painting these before varnishing would have protected them, but it's only small and it won't be noticed in the grand scheme of things, unless you're really looking closely at the model. Also, it might just be where the farm owner has splashed whitewash on the frames when they were painting the house. There, problem solved. I also disguised it further by washing the paintwork in Agrax Earthshade. You could go back when this is dry and repainting highlights, but I didn't bother. I painted the stone caps of the walls and a few more details before sticking the buildings into place on the base. As I knew where I wanted everything to be from before, this was nice and easy, and I just used superglue to make sure the bond was good. With the building on its base, I then used weathering powders to go around the bottom of the walls to create a tide mark of rainwater and grime, and to also blend the buildings in with the cobbles. I also used the powders to create dirt tracks in the yard and other areas of interest. Finally, for the weathering stage, I used weathering pencils and added grime streaks and rain wash where I thought it was appropriate, like on the edges of the roof of the farm and in other areas. These are simply wetted, and then applied and streaked with a brush in downward motion. Then the model is almost complete. I varnished the entire thing using Windsor & Newton professional artist matte spray. This will seal everything and dull down the previous gloss coat that I'd used. Make sure you obviously do this in a ventilated room or wear a mask or even preferably do it outside. We're now in the home stretch and you could leave the model as it is, it's perfectly usable on the tabletop. In fact, I used it in a game in this state at the club before I'd completed it but I wanted to add some more details, so I used Vallejo's mud paste and applied dirt around the edge of the base and also in patches in the courtyard where grass would naturally grow. These are areas that don't see much heavy traffic, or maybe even a little garden in front of the house for example. Then when this was dry I gave it a wash of Agrax, just to darken it up a little. Then, using diluted PVA glue, I sprinkled static grass all over the muddy areas, on the edges this will help blend the model into my tabletop, and it also gives it a bit of colour and interest within the courtyard. The final thing to do was to add some 3D printed scatter, such as barrels, grain sacks, ladders and other farmyard items to give it a lived in look. I also added grass and flower tufts, and some vines and ivy using PVA glue, and it was completed. It took about a week to complete, but most of that was drying time, and I only spent an hour or so each evening on the model so it was quite a quick build in all. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I do have some other terrain building videos on the channel. If you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe, and if you want to help out the channel, you can do by supporting me on Patreon or by channel membership. There you will get ad-free early access to videos. You can also buy me a coffee as a one-off payment. All the links in the description, and I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching.